Hello welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we explain how did communist state react to USSR's collapse. You have to make a clear distinction between Cuba, North Korea and China. Because in 1991, when USSR collapsed, Cuba and North Korea were USSR satellite countries, and China was neutral to slightly more favorable to the US. From the military and security aspect, the collapse of USSR was good for China, and terrible for North Korea and Cuba. The USSR had something like 2 million troops stationed between the Sino-Russia border post the Sino-Soviet border conflict in 1969. In the 80s, China unilaterally started cutting troops and defense budget, because they believed that the region was entering into a period of peace and development. So they just went ahead and cut their defense budget from 7% GDP to 1% GDP. Just like that. So they wanted to cut the budget, but also wanted to make sure that the USSR wouldn't give them trouble, so they secretly gave the US a little help when Russia invaded Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989. Soviet-Afghan war sorta like. We'll just let the fur balls fight with the mountain goats. Keep both of them occupied and leave us alone. They went as far as secretly allowing the US to operate a radar station in their Xinjiang province. And happily sold small arms to anybody who came calling. After USSR collapsed, the two sides didn't want to fight anymore, and a border agreement was quickly negotiated and signed in 1995. With the final agreement signed by both governments in 2005, for North Korea and Cuba, it meant the loss of security assurance and protection. The USSR was the security guarantor for a number of her small allies, and when the USSR collapsed, it basically left all of them hanging. This was what led to today's potential nuclear confrontation in North Korea today. You see... Before 1991, the USSR was responsible for ensuring North Korea did not develop nuclear weapons. In exchange for being under USSR's nuclear umbrella. So the USSR had her bombs stationed in North Korea, and the US had her bombs stations in South Korea. Mr. Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev met in 1985. And together they started working toward denuclearization, culminating in both sides withdrawing their nuclear bombs in 1991. U.S. to pull a bombs from South Korea so now North Korea is naked. With no peace treaty and no ally. So the only option for her was to enter peace negotiation with South Korea and try to get a peace treaty out of it. By December 1991. The two Koreas signed a joint declaration on the denuclearization, then the U.S. started sanctioning North Korea in 1992. North Korea said, fine, then I'm going to throw NPT out of the window in 1993. And things went downhill from there. Chronology of U.S.-North Korean nuclear and missile diplomacy economically. The collapse of USSR was devastating to Cuba and North Korea, but didn't affect China much. You see, both Cuba and North Korea were part of the USSR trade network Comcon. Cuba supplied sugar and citrus to Russia, and got oil and machines in return. North Korea was the petrochemical location for Comcon. They imported oil from Russia processed it into household stuff and materials, and sold those back to Comcon countries. See all those red and yellow countries. That's where they used to be able to free trade with. Overnight, they couldn't buy oil from Russia anymore, and they couldn't sell their products into the Russian market anymore. It was an economic bloodbath. Why do you think North Korea had all those famines in 1993 and 1994 and not before? North Korean famine because everything ran on oil, 
not only the farm equipment, but the chemical fertilizers are all made from oil. Without oil, it's an instant 50% drop in grain production. And Cuba, you see that big GDP drop off the cliff in 1991 to 1995, that literally wiped out the gains in the last 50 years. Yeah, that was thanks to the collapse of USSR. No oil anymore, and no market for their oranges and sugar. The impact on China's economy was somewhat muted. She lost those European investors. They were all going to East Europe. But she got to poach a good bag full of former Russian and Ukrainian scientists and tech talents, now that they were reduced to going through dumpsters for food. Also a lot of technologies became available at quite reasonable prices, and China picked up some of those too. Not as much as the US and EU were able to. But she got her bit. Politically it was very interesting. I bet you never heard any complaint from Cuba or North Korea about the collapse of USSR and the fact that they were left hanging. You see, the guys who complain are those who can afford to complain. Neither Cuba nor North Korea could afford to complain at that time. Instead, both of them had to be super careful not to give offense to anybody, because they are small defenseless countries newly on their own. It's like the way beggars are always smiling at you for no reason. They have to be pleasant to all potential patrons. The interesting episode happened with Yeltsin. As soon as USSR collapsed, there was no more quarrel between Russia and China. So China set out to improve the relationship between the two, seeing immediately that a better relationship between Russia and China would enable both of them to get better deals from the US. His drunken highness, in his infinity stupidity, decided to throw the Chinese out to curry some diplomatic favor with the Americans, so he went on paper blasting Chinese communist dictators. Like, not even in exchange for, how about if you move your IC fab or computer assembly line to here in Russia, like you did with the cars in Japan. But just to say, look I'm a good boy. Authentic democracy fighter. The Chinese were totally floored by such, absolutely inconceivable whatnot. So the Chinese Politburo said, the guy must be either drunk or stupid, maybe both. So they sent out a delegation to Russia to meet with Yeltsin, with something like, 